Hi, this is Bernard Koenig, BK Solutions, and today we're going to talk about crawl spaces, and that's the word says, you have to crawl in. So that's the way in. I'm not going to show you how I'm doing it, and I meet you inside. And then we talk about all the energy issues we can find in a crawl space, including our issues about the microclimate in there. Uh, you would be surprised what's happening inside an area like that, which typically nobody ever goes in there. We're here down in a crawl space and I thought I found a perfect example to talk about crawl space ventilation and insulation with the corresponding problems you can encounter. So uh, what is a crawl space? A crawl space is an area where normally you don't put anything in there. The floor is maybe just uh, like here, dirt, construction debris and above you you have the ceiling or the floor and above the floor there's living space. The human beings living, they uh, like it nice and warm in the winter and uh, sometimes they wonder why they have cold feet. Well, there's uh, one reason why. The big question is why is that fiberglass falling down? I mean, one is gravity, for sure. People walking around slowly, slowly creates small little vibrations and that fiberglass, it's getting loose and attracted to by gravity downwards. The other reason is fiberglass is can take on moisture and it's going to become quite heavy. And who's introducing moisture in here is this open window. Brings us to the topic of uh, crawl space ventilation. Should I vent? Should I not vent the crawl space? Uh, you're probably going to get all kinds of answers. Me personally, I think a crawl space should not be vented, especially if it's a dry crawl space, because by having a window open like this here in the summer, you're going to introduce huge amount of moisture into your crawl space. Think about the crawl space has its own microclimate. And what's going to happen in this particular case, if you leave the window open all summer long, there's going to be very moist air coming into this basement. And we have some pretty thick, heavy walls, which we know from experience are always cooler. So if you're in a some hot summer day, you go down in the basement, it feels great. It's nice and cold, refreshing, but for the moist air coming in, something's going to happen. Okay, so now the moist air going to come into that crawl space and it's going to drop its moisture and it's going to be like internal rain in here. So literally the ceiling, the walls, everything's going to be sweaty and wet. In the case, the fiberglass, the closest to the window, is going to get wet first. And it's going to get wet such, to such a point that the fiberglass actually may detach because you now have gallons of water in that insulation. And I mean, I'm not kidding. I, I, went, I went in homes where literally you could see the drops on the ceiling and it was dripping like in a cave. As soon as we closed those vents and we ran a dehumidifier to just get all the moisture out, there was no moisture coming back in, even after heavy rain. So clearly it was the moisture from those vents during the summer who brought, introduced all that moisture inside the crawl space. Now in this particular case, we have a, like a mixture of all kinds of different technologies here. Uh, we have areas with absolutely no insulation. Then we have areas with insulation. The rim joist area, there is already some spray foam work. The spray foam work has been applied partially over the fiberglass insulation, which is not a good idea. The foam itself is a very soft foam. It's called open cell foam. You can just push it in. So this is open cell foam and uh, it's very soft. You can stick your finger in there. It's, it's a very light material. So I don't use open cell foam at all. It's uh, very, it's cheaper. That's the main reason why people use it. it brings a lot of long-term issues with itself. It's more like a sponge. It's going to take a lot of water and it can absorb water. It's, it's open cell. It's like a kitchen sponge. Okay, let's talk about fiberglass and insulation of ceilings underneath living space. 
you can see there's a lot of fiberglass here, at least partially. Um, we're going to try to go further up in here. And you can see that's typical. Fiberglass through gravity gets pulled downwards. So what's going to happen here is that there's always a little gap between the ceiling itself and the insulation. And now cold air can just shoot underneath or in between the fiberglass insulation and the floor. Even though you have insulation, you're still going to feel cold feet in the winter. Uh, another disadvantage using a fiberglass in such an environment is uh, rodents. They love to live just in between here because they benefit from the heat coming from the floor and have a nice layer of insulation towards the cold. So they start to build nests just underneath it. Um, insulation like this often is rated for R19. That's what typically you see in uh, floors or underneath floors. The truth is, if here you have an R7 or 8, you're very lucky. Because just the way it has been insulated, uh, just the way it's hanging down here now, you, you barely have any insulation. Because the air can just bypass all that and just get around it. Don't think because it's printed R19 on it, you do have R19. Very often you have a third of it or half of it. Let's talk about solutions here. What could be done? Well, in my perspective, there's only two ways to address this here. One is either to spray foam properly underneath it with closed cell foam, which is quite costly. But once it's done, uh, you should be okay for a long period of time. The second advantage is it doesn't absorb any moisture. You can put it in a water tank for a year or two and it's not going to take a drop of water. Uh, another solution would be here, if moisture is not an issue down here in this core space, is to use cellulose to insulate the ceiling. Uh, it's kind of time consuming to install. The membrane has to be attached to the existing joists tighten it up and then it would be filled with cellulose dense packed. That sandwich would stop any airflow. The cellulose will not be able to detach itself from the ceiling and the mice don't like to live in cellulose either. So that might be another option but uh, it depends a bit on the, the conditions. I mean here there's a lot of uh, supporting members there's some pipes, some wires, so it might get difficult to install a membrane and then put the cellulose in. So if you start to do the math uh, and add all the labor costs in here, you might be better off just spray forming this whole area and be done with it. Okay, so we made some progress here. All the old insulation has been removed and um, I started spray foaming. The idea is to apply three inches of uh, insulation underneath the floor. So it's going to give me an R19, R20. Here I'm almost done. I'm going to have to uh, remeasure, but I think I do have already my three inches here. I, my company went through a three day training just to learn how to properly use spray foam. And once I did those three days, I realized all the things I didn't know. First of all, I cannot spray foam in a house with occupants in it. So the day I spray foam, everybody has to leave the house. And you can only come back when I call you back. Do not recommend the homeowner to spray foam. It's not something you want to do yourself. Uh, even some professionals don't have all the skills necessary to properly spray foam. The house is a complex system which interacts. So you can't just go and do something in one area and uh, you may be surprised that suddenly something else happens in another area. So you saw now uh, what we did in that particular crawl space. Uh, it can be complicated. Uh, it's sometimes a little tricky and you have to be careful what you're doing down there because sometimes it looks quite simple but there's a lot of building science behind it. So you have to work with the system and understand all the elements of the system before you go and try to improve one area without impacting another area in a negative way. So if you have a crawl space here in Westchester County 
don't hesitate to call me and they're going to come by and help you. Thank you very much.